More American lives, way more, were lost in a single war than in all other U.S. wars, <laughs> like, put together. And it's, well, it's kind of why we're doing this whole deep dive thing today, you know. It's the Civil War we're talking about. Yeah. You sent this article, A House Divided, Lincoln, Slavery, and the Road to the Bloodiest War in American History. And it's, well, it's a lot. It is. So we're going to, you know, unpack it, try to figure out what really caused this whole mess, and maybe, just maybe, see why it still matters, you know, even now. What most folks miss is it wasn't just North versus South, like on a map. This was uh, economics, different ways people lived, what they believed. It was like a whole different reality almost. So like two sides disagreeing, sure, but more like they weren't even speaking the same language. Exactly. By 1860, think about this, over 30 percent of the South, their population were enslaved people. This wasn't some small debate. This was their entire way of life built on that. Over 30 percent. Wow. That's like more than a whole classroom full makes it way more uh, intense when you think of it like that. But the article it doesn't just say slavery and stop there. This state's rights thing, that's what it says, was a huge deal. And I got to be honest, that's always kind of confused me. Like, what's that really about? Right. So states' rights, it all comes down to this. Who gets to decide what goes on inside a state's borders? Is it the state itself or is it the whole federal government you know, calling the shots. So like your town gets to set some rules, but then there's also national laws. Exactly. Okay. Now, put that into the Civil War context. The South, they saw any attempt, any time the government up north tried to mess with slavery, limit it, whatever, that was a direct attack on their freedom as they saw it. They thought they had the right to run things their way, even if it meant keeping slavery. And that clash, that's where things get explosive, like literally. Exactly. A powder keg waiting for a spark. And then boom. Lincoln gets elected in 1860. Was that it? That, that like, guarantee the war was going to happen? It was huge, no doubt. Lincoln's election, it changed everything. Now, he hated slavery personally, we know that. But at first, his main goal, he wanted to keep the country together, the Union. Getting rid of slavery outright, that wasn't the priority, not at first. So he's walking a tightrope from day one. Yeah. Makes what he did later with the Emancipation Proclamation that much more interesting. You know what I mean? Totally. See, the Emancipation Proclamation, it came in 1863, and people get it wrong all the time. It didn't free every slave. Only the ones in Confederate states, the ones fighting against the Union. Hold on. So he's basically saying surrender and you can keep your slaves. What was the point of that strategically? It was a strategic move on Lincoln's part. By freeing slaves only in areas actively fighting against the Union, he aimed to weaken the Confederacy's workforce and potentially incite rebellions. But it also cleverly reframed the war's objective, shifting it from purely preserving the Union to also encompassing the fight against slavery. It added a whole other layer of complexity and morality to the conflict. And it reminds us that even amidst the chaos and brutality of war, Leaders are often grappling with agonizing choices, trying to balance strategy with ideals. Speaking of chaos and brutality, this is where I think we often overlook the human cost of the Civil War. We hear names like Gettysburg or Antietam, but what do those names really tell us about what it was like to be there, to experience this conflict firsthand? You're absolutely right. Those weren't just battles. They were crucibles of human suffering. Take the first Battle of Bull Run in 1861. Both sides went in expecting a swift victory. What they got was a bloodbath that shattered any illusions of a quick resolution. This was a turning point where the reality of a long, devastating war set in. It makes you realize how unprepared everyone was for the sheer scale of this conflict. Yeah, exactly. And then there's Antietam in 1862, the single bloodiest day in American military history. Over 22,000 casualties in a single day. Imagine that for a moment a loss equivalent to several entire towns wiped out in a matter of hours. It's almost unimaginable. Yeah. The sheer scale of the loss, the grief. And yet, amidst these horrors, stories of resilience and human connection emerge. There are countless accounts of soldiers from opposing sides showing compassion on the battlefield, tending to each other's wounds, sharing what little food and water they had. Even in the darkest of times, humanity found a way to flicker through. It's a powerful reminder that even in war, we're not just dealing with faceless enemies, but with individuals capable of incredible acts of empathy and decency. Precisely. And these individual stories, these glimpses of shared humanity, are just as crucial to understanding the Civil War as the grand strategies and political maneuvering. So we have these pivotal battles, these staggering losses, these glimpses of humanity amidst the carnage. Were there any other turning points, moments that truly shifted the course of the war? Gettysburg in 1863 stands out as a decisive moment. 
the Confederacy's defeat there extinguished their hopes of securing foreign support. This highlights a crucial aspect of the conflict. Even in a nation's internal struggles, the international stage plays a role. It's easy to forget that a war fought on American soil could have been influenced by decisions made across the ocean. Absolutely. The Confederacy, hoping to gain recognition and aid from powerful European nations like Great Britain and France, saw their aspirations crumble on the fields of Gettysburg. The Union victory had global implications. So the ripple effects of these battles were felt far beyond the immediate front lines. Precisely. And then there's Sherman's march to the sea in late 1864. It wasn't just a military campaign. It was a calculated act of destruction aimed at crippling the South's infrastructure and morale. Sherman understood that to win the war, he had to break the enemy's will to fight. That's a chilling thought, that victory sometimes requires such ruthless tactics. War is rarely clean or simple. It forces us to confront uncomfortable truths about ourselves and the choices we make in the face of unimaginable circumstances. And speaking of uncomfortable truths, the war's end doesn't erase the scars it leaves behind, does it? Not at all. The South, in particular, was left reeling from the war's devastation. Cities lay in ruins, the economy was shattered, and the social fabric was irrevocably torn. And this is where we transition from the battlefield to the long, arduous process of rebuilding a nation fractured by conflict. And I imagine that rebuilding process came with its own set of challenges and complexities. Absolutely. The abolition of slavery, while a monumental victory for human rights, created a new set of questions about citizenship, equality, and justice questions that would continue to reverberate throughout American history. It sounds like the end of the Civil War was just the beginning of a whole new chapter in the American story. Precisely. And it's a chapter filled with both progress and setbacks, triumphs and tragedies, as the nation grappled with the legacy of its most divisive conflict. You know, it's funny, we call it Reconstruction after the Civil War, like it's all about fixing stuff up. But it was more like, I don't know, everything's different now, right? It's huge upheaval, not just putting pieces back where they were. So less we won, it's over, more like, uh-oh, what now? Exactly. The South, I mean, devastated, you know, right. right? Cities wrecked, their whole economy gone. And four million people who were enslaved, suddenly they're free. But in a country that, well, let's just say not everyone was thrilled about that part. Yeah. And yeah. the article, it really makes you think about that. Just because the war is over, those ideas that caused it, the prejudice, that doesn't just vanish overnight. Nope. In fact, it kind of backfires. You get these Jim Crow laws popping up, basically trying to keep black people down, separate but equal, that whole thing. And that lasted for, what, almost a century. It's like they break the cycle of slavery, but then this new cycle starts up almost the same but worse because it's like we learn nothing. History, man, it rhymes. You know, yeah. it's this constant push and pull. But the point is real change, the kind that sticks. It's more than just laws on paper. It's got to be inside people, how they see each other. Mm. And that that takes way longer and it's way harder. So where does that leave us then? If the Civil War was always about more than just slavery, it was about freedom itself. But for who? Right. What are we supposed to learn from all this even now? Million dollar question, right? I think it shows us progress ain't a straight line. It's messy, sometimes you go backwards, it's painful, all of it. But we gotta talk about the tough stuff, our own biases, and never think freedom's just a given, it's not. Lots to think about. Which is kind of the whole point of these deep dives, right? History isn't just dates and names, it's about us, even now. Totally. And if this leaves you with more questions, good. Means you're really getting it, how complex it all was, and still is. Right on. So, keep thinking about this stuff, find different sides to the story, and hey, keep sending us those articles. Until next time, everyone, keep on learning.